you'll need to click into um, the main screen too. I can see it as a slide on the left currently. And uh, Gemmel's about to join us. So away, with, you might want to do the introduction. Thanks, uh, Esther. Sure. Welcome, everyone, to tonight's lineup. We have uh, the way ahead with the way of life today. And I uh, know we are all part of Australia for Jesus, which means we're all nationally connecting from various parts of Australia, uh, around Australia. So it's lovely to have everyone gathered together. Always an encouraging time. We just want to welcome and acknowledge uh, the 30 uh, screens that's on, on, um, on tonight. And uh, also welcome back to Tony yeah. and uh, having Roger as well alongside myself. My name is Esther Schiff for those who don't know me I think most of you are regulars so we just want to welcome any new people onto tonight uh, to Australia for Jesus so if you hear us say AFJ it's Australia for Jesus that you've joined in on so welcome and thank you very much Tony we'll head, head back to you oh thanks very much and I hope I've unmuted yes uh, we can hear you Great. very good excellent well there's our subject tonight Join us for the way ahead with the way of life. And uh, that that beautiful bit of graphic was done by Roger, uh, where he managed to get the Main Street uh, posts right there on the beach. I don't know if everyone likes that particular feature, but I'm sure we all like the beach. And uh, let's see what's in store for us tonight. Uh, it's a bit of a contrast, we, isn't it? With it the beach a being the nat nature and the, the construction style of, uh, of uh, what, where we are government-wise. Right. And there's been a lot happening, Esther, uh, a lot of happening around the country. And I'm just going to ask uh, yes. Champagne uh, yes. to lead us in prayer for tonight and just to dedicate our meeting to the Lord. Thanks, Sean. Great. Thanks. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, realizing how blessed we are to be able to speak with you as a father and that you'll be watching over this meeting with us tonight. We just pray, Lord, that there should be nothing in our hearts that would prevent your Holy Spirit working through us, and that if we have anything on our minds that we should ask forgiveness for, we do that now. Bless Tony as he presents the program, and may the message for each one of us may not be the same, but Lord, we hope it will continue to unify Australia for Jesus mm. as one body in Christ serving you. Mm. And Lord Jesus, just bless this nation, continue to bless, bless this nation, even though um, what we see going on is a bit disturbing at times. We just remember that you have everything in control. And uh, we just depend on you and look to you, Jesus, alone. You are the one we look to and we keep our eyes on you. So thank you, Lord, that we will do that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Charmaine. And look, um, Charmaine's conducting, and, and uh, so is uh, Lorraine, uh, a daily prayer meeting. One's called Raw, the other one's called R uh, Rise, and we'll find out a bit more about that later. Now, I think I'm correct in saying that picture in the bottom right-hand corner, Geraldton actually is in Geraldton, and uh, that that's Celia, the blonde-headed lady up the back there. Is that Lorraine? Is that the case, Lorraine? Yes, that's correct. Oh, very good. Well, it's great Great to see the uh, probably the most almost westernmost point of Australia uh, getting involved with the Way of Life campaigns and uh, very exciting to see that uh, going on. And you can see the other groups involved there. Uh, I don't know if Andrew Kopp is with us today. Uh, what was happening there in Canberra, Andrew? What was happening there in Andrew? Yeah, uh, yes, in yes, we uh, met in the centre of Canberra called Civic. Um, and uh, had a, a great sort of occasion uh, meeting a, a Bangladeshi man um, who listened throughout the whole way of life and um, mm -hmm. there's some follow-up going on in that space and uh, we've got Ivan on the left um, and uh, Ratna, uh, Ratna's a regular in Canberra, uh, it was a, a productive time um, speaking to both young and old um, and uh, as all as as we experience God is present and uh, people hear the gospel. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andrew. And look, uh, right next to your picture, we've got 
a, a, a picture from the Gold Coast. Uh, Roger, um, we've got Steve Kennedy there. I don't know if Steve's joined us online tonight, but you've already mentioned you have Rob. So over to you, Roger, for a comment there. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks, Tony. Um, yeah, that was the very first the first outing that we had at the Gold Coast um, out at Burley Burley Heads, and a team of about five guys. And Steve Kennedy is our Gold Coast leader, and um, Rob joined him on um, on Saturday, just gone. But I think you've got another slide where there's a bigger photo of this, Tony. And it might I I believe Steve is joining us tonight. So if we can get when we get to that. Yeah, I yeah. will do that. I will do yeah. that. Thanks a lot uh, for that suggestion, Roger. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move over to, is it Bustleton or Bunbury uh, on this occasion? We've got these merry people with uh, Esther there. Now, what's happening there, Esther? Well, it's our regular meetups um, and we do meet pretty much similar crew, both from Bustleton and Bunbury. So we meet once a month in Bustleton and once a month in Bunbury. So therefore we're meeting twice a month, really. So we've got a peekaboo uh, glasses on the top left there from Jen. Um, we've got also Greg, followed by Alan in the back in the green, myself and you got Karen. So that's us in Bustleton in that, on that occasion, just uh, more recently in, uh, in our recent meetup last or this month. Yeah. Excellent. And look, we've got a couple of pictures here from Chatswood, uh, one featuring Colin. Uh, Colin, could you tell us a bit about that, Colin Chamberlain? You might have to unmute, brother. Yeah, un unmute and put the video on. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, that was up in Chatswood with um, David Capella and Stephen Croft uh, there together with me. I'm, I'm on the right and they're on the, uh, Dave in the middle and Steve on the left. And um, yeah, we had a, a really, uh, a really good day. I was going around with Steve, and um, we met this young, uh, well, I say young lady. She's probably late thirties, early forties, and um, uh, we we approached her and said, "We're um, concerned Christians. Would you be interested in um, giving us a few minutes?" And she did. And um, we we're going through the presentation, and what she said was that. Um, as, as we explained um, that, you know, the purpose of life um, and uh, giving that understanding that, you know, we're all sinners saved by grace. And as we shared the gospel and she said to me, her daughter just last week had said to her, her eight-year-old daughter, and said, Mummy, I go to school, I go to um, uh, university, I go to work, I get married, I have children. Uh, what wh wh what does it all mean? And, and I die. What does it all mean? Yeah, and, I, I remember that. I remember asking that very question myself when I was a young army officer, Colin. And I just below that, of course, you've got um, a repeat picture there. And we're going to say some more about Chatswood in a minute. So thanks for that input. And uh, uh, let's uh, let's go to the picture just below you. Uh, we've got Max and Sarah and. We've got an interloper here, Max and Sarah. Who's that? Yeah. Um, you want to say? Yeah. Bill came up to join us, which is very special. Yes. Um, unfortunately, the three people that have been coming out with us, two were away, and the third one wasn't able to come out with us, but it was good to go out with Bill. Very encouraging. Very encouraging. Yeah. 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 Bill's, no, great, Bill's great from point. Augusta in WA. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Malloy is. Island. We, we hadn't heard of Malloy Island, but yeah, that no, was very good. And then they came to church with us yesterday too, which was good. Yeah, well, do give him my regards if he's still around town. Now, while we're talking about WA, of course, that was Queensland, but uh, we've got this wonderful picture of uh, Sabrina Tassone and uh, her crew in the Perth CBD. And you'll notice they're not wearing T-shirts, and that's because there are some people who are a bit finicky about anyone handing out any literature in the CBD, so they've gone sort of a little bit incognito. That's brilliant. <laughs> so that's, that's, had brilliant. To that's had to happen from time to time. But so they do a great job, and you can see that uh, they're all getting, you know, all delighted to be with each other in this. And uh, whilst we're getting in WA, we're going over to Albany, and we've got Glenda Palmer there, and I think this is Kim here. What's been happening there, Glenda? Are you able to unmute and have a chat? Yes, well, um, that day, Kim shared the way of life with seven Solomon Island guys. Now, they're in Albany working at the abattoirs, 
um, I'm not sure for how long, but yes, they all wanted to say the sinner's prayer um, after hearing it from Kim. And um, yeah, uh, you can see one of them is very Christ proudly God. showing his um, John's gospel in the photo. Um, one, one of them is taking the photo and, and then there was another one that didn't hang around for the photo, but we got his email. Oh, yeah, very good. So that was really encouraging to us. And I, yeah, I'm sure about that. And look, I noticed that there's a, a Gospel of John being displayed there. That's great to yeah. see. Yeah. And uh, further conversations going on over here. I think that was in Albany also, was it? Yes, that's uh, uh, Jenny. Oh, Jenny okay. sharing with a couple. Uh, Charmaine knows a little about that. Okay, okay. Was that was that Albany Jenny? Because Jenny's gone, been everywhere, man. She's been everywhere, and I wouldn't be sure which one this was. It wasn't yeah, with me. Albany. Albany. Oh, very good. Tell, tell us about it. Thank, tell thanks us about for your it. input there, uh, uh, Charmaine and Jenny, because it's been very, very encouraging to see how uh, Jenny's been getting around and connecting with people, and very exciting indeed. And look, uh, someone's obviously had time for a cup of coffee uh, along the way there. So great to see these pictures coming in. Please keep sending them because we like to keep these fresh and up to date. And uh, and it encourages everybody else to know that there are a lot of other people apart from themselves out there doing the job. So thanks everyone for that. Answered prayer uh, is a big factor. When we're out on uh, Saturday at Chatswood with AK Lim and with... Uh, uh, Peter Coe and uh, Ajitha, who was our leader, uh, I remember praying that the Lord would grant us at least three uh, people who would respond to the gospel. And I'm um, delighted to say that uh, you know the lineup of that small group of five of us, I had to do go on my Pat Malone because someone else didn't turn up, but the five of us went out and uh, excitedly, excitedly, we saw four partial presentations, 10 full presentations, six sinners' prayers, and three people really wanted to exchange their details. So that was good. And I had a very good conversation with um, uh, some young men at the same time. On the theme of answered prayer, uh, you'll see a picture of Martin Tui, the late Martin Tui, and, uh, and Hilary Moroni. Hilary Moroni is the director of the Canberra House of Prayer they were out just in December last year. And um, I'll have a little bit more to say about Martin because we had a memorial uh, gathering uh, on Zoom last week uh, for Martin. But I remember Martin uh, praying with, praying with um, we're talking about answered prayer here, praying with Hillary uh, because he wanted to get a caravan and go around Australia. And uh, he wanted to, uh, engage with people with the gospel uh, wherever he could go and uh, and and that's exactly what happened and uh, it all began with uh, his desire shared with so many others at the Canberra House of Prayer and Hillary remembers the day they prayed it would have been about 2015 and that became fulfilled basically in 2021 going into 2022 and, and Martin of course did a magnificent job going around to so many places uh, along the way uh, before he died just on May, end of May. Pentecost Sunday is when he died. And uh, so we were very, very saddened by that. And I'll be attending the, uh, the funeral at Musselbrook or one of the memorial services at Musselbrook. Uh, whilst we're on the subject of, um, <clears throat> of answered prayer also, you see this collective group here, you know, very often we forget our prayers. You know, the Lord never does. And uh, this gentleman here, and this gentleman here, that's Bernie O'Leary and that's Rob Stevens. They both came along to a, a spirit-filled meeting in Perth, urgently seeking the full, fullness of the Holy Spirit. And they asked me to pray for them. The Lord was wonderfully present at the time when we prayed for them in uh, Bernie's home, and they had set their hearts on to be fruitful for the Lord. And Bernie has now been running uh, uh, Alpha for Prisons for some years with great fruitfulness. 
And we joined Alice's prayer meeting at Lakeside Baptist Church. Alice is now running a way of life campaign most Saturday mornings at Lakeside Baptist. And Rob Stevens is running an alpha uh, in the church uh, this uh, coming part of the year. So it just shows you, you know, the cumulative effect on people that God brings across our path who are eager to follow the Lord. And uh, I, I was so glad that I had, you know, opportunity to witness God's work in their lives ongoing over many years. Now, back to you, Roger. I, I noticed we've got that picture again with uh, a commentary yeah. <clears throat> up here. Yeah, so this is definitely an answer to prayer too. Um, we've been praying for the Gold Coast for quite a while and um, it just wasn't opening up. And um, it was amazing. I was booked to go to to the Gold Coast, but still really looking for a church that would host us. And sure enough, just the Sunday, the day before I left, this man in the middle, um, his name's Tom, turned up in Canberra at our church and he became a key link, link to the churches there at the Gold Coast with Steve Kennedy, our leader on the Gold Coast, on the right with the hat. Um, but Tom and and, uh, and um, Steve are really the core, a core along with Paul on the left next to myself and Felice. And Rob uh, McDermott has just joined uh, joined in. He came along on, on Saturday with Steve. And Rob, maybe you'd like to give us just a quick comment of your experience. Yeah, that'd be nice, right? Yeah. First time out, you have to come off mute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I went out with Steve. Uh, there was only the two of us, and uh, the whole morning, um, it's probably um, about an hour and a half all up. Uh, we spoke to two different guys. One was an older guy, I think homeless. Um, had a very long chat with him. Very amicable. He was very open, receptive um and uh we well i think we got him thinking seriously and uh so that was where that finished um the um second chat we w walked on a bit further and came across a chinese well he was chinese by heritage he's been in australia for a while i would say his english was reasonable and uh again it was a very lengthy chat um, and anyway, much to my surprise, um, I don't know how well, how well he understood, but he did pray the sinner's prayer. Um, so, um, yeah, and, uh, he did give us his details and Steve, um, took all that down. So, um, well, that's a very good initial report. Yes, it was very great. Good initial report. Mm. Well, look, uh, uh, Rob, that's um, that's great to see that um, that you're out there so soon after being in touch with us. We're very excited about that, and uh, I know Steve would find it very, very encouraging from his point of view to have your involvement. So God bless you for that. So uh, we're talking about answered prayer, of course, uh, along the way, and uh, we also did talk about Martin's. Um, uh, memorial service, and you can see the link there to our our uh, Zoom meeting that's on screen, and Esther might be able to copy that and, and put it on chat. I'm not sure if you can do that, Esther. We're not going to revisit all of that, but there were a couple of testimonies that were very, very good, or shall we say um, uh, comments. One of them was from Rutner, and uh, I'm not sure that this will play, so I'm going to ask Roger if he would, I'll, I'll stop my share and ask Roger if he would share both Lorraine's and Rutner's uh, presentation, or would you like me to go straight to WhatsApp, Rutner? I, 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 can, do a, I can do Rutner's right off my uh, WhatsApp, I think, uh, if I can share the screen, or would you like to do it, Roger? Roger, you're muted. As you're I'll have a go now and see how we go. Okay, very good. Are you seeing Rutner there? We are. It's not very good, Roger. I'll try mine, okay? Okay. Don't forget to click that little square box as you click, sign into the share screen. Okay, I'll I'll start off with uh, Rutner and um, see if we can get it to work here.
Okay. Let's see if this works well. Thank you for being with me. My name is Ratna and I'm from Canberra AFJ. To me, Martin was a very precious man, a fellow tax officer, loved by Jesus, and one who loved Jesus very much. As a Christian, I admired Martin going out during lunchtime with his pocket trumpet to the city square and playing Christian music on a regular basis. It was Martin who introduced Australia for Jesus and the way of life presentation to me way back in early 2020. On Friday nights, Martin would go to the city square, Grima Place in Canberra, with his music and sound systems. He would set it up there, out there, where all the restaurants are around there. And uh, the whole atmosphere is buzzing with people hanging out. And he would just uh, play Christian songs. He would play his trumpet along and also share snippets of the gospel. So Martin really inspired me to join him. And so I started joining him on Friday nights uh, and started sharing the gospel, the way of life presentation with the people who were hanging out there in that atmosphere of praise and worship. And it would bring so much joy to Martin to see people, particularly young people, respond to the gospel, listening to the gospel, hearing and responding. I could honestly say God used Martin to help me get out of my comfort zone and to become an active participant in the AFJ moment. Thank you, Martin. God bless you. Well, that's a wonderful testimony from Ratna, and I'm going to try and also bring your attention this one from Lorraine, who is our National Development Coordinator. I'm Lorraine Walker from Perth, and to me, Martin was the epitome of the good and faithful servant of the Lord. When we are at Tamworth Country Music Festival, he willingly uh, cooked for us, fed us three times a day if we wanted over the eight days, and at night he... He beautifully led us in worship with his instruments and, Lord, we're just, we're just so thankful for him. Oh, what a man. I'm so grateful to spend those eight days with him to get to know him better with the group and um, to see what a man of God that he was. We know he's been promoted to glory. We can, still can't believe that it's happened but he has been promoted to glory and to life eternal with Jesus. And we know we're going to see him again. So farewell, Martin. It's only for a short time and we will see you again in the future. Thank you for all that you were to us in Australia for Jesus and in your family and, and in the greater Christian community. You're a good man. Thank you. Bye. Shalom. Well, thank you, Lorraine, for that uh, wonderful and heartfelt uh, uh, tribute to Martin and also Rutner. Thank you for yours. So we, we thought so highly of both of those. All everyone, we had about 16 or 18 people contribute, uh, but we couldn't put you through through it all tonight. Um, but, but I'm sure if you want to watch the tributes, uh, I think you'll, you'll agree that uh, Martin set a wonderful example for all of us. So uh, just uh, just to continue on in our um, in our in our time together, I'm just going to go to another shared screen. Uh, Esther, can we see? You should see Rutner once again on the screen there. Yes, I can see it. Uh, good. I'm just going to move the slide along and um, uh, see if I can move the slide along to uh, the uh, next thing that we're going to be dealing with. Okay. It's good to discuss the progress in terms of our uh, 
various statistics, we, we do take note of everyone's report. And I'm going to ask Lorraine just briefly to comment on reporting because she does such a great job of sweeping up all the bits and pieces. And that can be sometimes a painful experience, but Lorraine does it so patiently. Uh, Lorraine, uh, any comment on reporting just at the moment? Because we are very grateful for all your work and the work of everyone else sending in their reports. Yes, um, thank you to all the people who responded today uh, to my phone calls to ask for reports. Uh, if you can all remember, um, as soon as you've done your debrief, to fill out the form and send it in. And before you press submit, uh, just take a screenshot of it to send to the national WhatsApp group so we can all see it. Uh, if you forget to do that and you've already pressed submit, just enter all the details again and don't press submit and just take the screenshot and then cancel it. So um, it's important that we all get encouraged and see how many um, campaign reports come in and, and, and what's happening, whether it's a zero report or not, you know, it's not about the results so much. It's about the fact that people have gone out and been obedient to the Lord. So thank you for getting those reports in. And also it helps Tony with the stats um, so that we know exactly uh, who has gone out. And don't forget, tomorrow I've got to do the upcoming campaign list. So please get them into your state reporters. Thank you. Well, well, Can I just add, Attorney? Yes, Can I do. just add that um, those reports of the national WhatsApp are very important for the prayer groups too, because we yes. can go through them and pray over them um, and the people that have been contacted. It, you know, it's just it's a, a a great idea if we all know who's been out and um, the results. So, I encourage you to do that from a prayer point of view as well. Amen. Yeah, magnificent. magnificent. Well, we're, we're now looking at the statistics, and I'll just get Esther to read those for us. Uh, thanks, Esther. Okay. The numbers are looking steady and fairly high. It's great to see amazing results, being we're all out there in, in our greens and in the community. So wonderful. We've got January through to June listed there. So the six months, seeing June at 70. Uh, 80 is where we're at for February with shorter, a few shorter days. And March, we had an 85 uh, total with an amazing 100 that we hit in April with May back dropped to 76. And in June, so far to date, we've seen 82. And uh, not sure if we're going to hit another one this weekend. No, we just finish it. But there might be still um, sessions that keep coming in because 30th of June works out to be Friday. And I do know sometimes people do go out in the weekday as well. But it's certainly uh, awesome to see people are uh, putting in those uh, reports in and we can certainly then track and see how things are going. I know on this screen, Tony's taken the time to do a graph and I like the graph that you have for us, Tony. So um Look at that. That's just a nice way of visually seeing how the numbers have climbed and how we managed to hit in April there a good uh, 100. I think maybe it could have been an Easter outreaches that's gone a little bit more. In the total, we've seen 2,622 campaigns, of which I think there's another figure to be shown. 5,000, wow, 5,196 response prayers in that time. So um, you're making impact. You're certainly going out there, sharing the gospel and being a part of community, sharing uh, and letting people know that, you know, Jesus loves you and we are there to, to win souls and let them know that uh, there is life after death. And so we uh, appreciate all that you do. And we thank you for your commitment to Australia for Jesus and using the way of life. So thanks, everyone. Uh, a tremendous effort every week, every month, and seeing those stats being submitted. Thank you, Lorraine, for all your hard work behind the scenes, collating them, and for Charmaine with all your prayer groups as well. Thanks, guys. Well, yeah, and uh, what a wonderful summary there. Thanks, Esther. And you'll see that um, if I get a comment on this 100, Esther, I believe that 100 was realised because we had a five-week month. Uh, oh, right. But also, so an extra week makes a difference, but also uh, I think Easter may have also attracted more people out on the streets. I think you're um, right. I think you're right. Yes. And so when we come up to July, it'd be wonderful to see uh, 100 there uh, because once you get to 100, you're well over a thousand campaigns a year. And we, wow. 
You look at the figures down down the bottom here, and I, I hope some people like figures. Uh, I, I like them a little bit, and not too much. Uh, that approximately two uh, response prayers per campaign is the the usual run of things. Yeah, so for every campaign, on average, we see two people who will pray a sinner's prayer. So yeah, you can see there's been quite a distinct trend upwards, 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 and we're averaging a bit better now. Uh, over 80 campaigns per month. That's 20 a week. And that's astonishing, and it just shows the tremendous possibilities that exist as we join forces with the Lord and we go out and uh, do this, uh, sharing the gospel. And as some people say, well, look, you know, is it important to have all these results? Well, uh, in the Bible, it's very clear that, that, that the Bible continued to... Uh, to list results, even if it was individuals here and there, but sometimes you'll see figures like 3,000 saved on the day of Pentecost. You'll see uh, a great number of the priests saved and 4,000 men on another occasion. Uh, the, the gospel does give, uh, or rather the, the scripture does give numbers from time to time quite definitely. So uh, it's, it's not wrong for us to look at the numbers uh, and thank God for his blessing in that regard. Uh, so <clears throat> just to, just to, to press on, uh, and thanks for that, Esther, and thanks for all that contributed to that slide. The the topic for tonight is joining uh, in with the way of life, and what can we do to progress things and to yeah you know, really reach out more and more to our nation for Christ. And the purpose of these Zoom sessions is to be an, mainly an encouragement and point of contact with everyone, uh, because we don't get the opportunity to be on the ground very much with you at all. Uh, we regret that. Uh, it was wonderful last October, I think it was, Lorraine, that I was able to visit most of the people in southern uh, WA. wasn't getting, able to get up to Geraldton, but I'm hopeful of visiting WA again before the end of the year. It's always very exciting to be over there. Um, so Thank as you. we look, look into... Sorry, was there a, a comment there? Sorry? Thank you. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty easy to handle. So... Uh, uh, we've got a reading here, and I'm going to ask Esther to read this page for us, and then uh, I'll get um, Charmaine to read the page following on. So just be prepared to be un unmuted. Uh, and it's from Genesis chapter 26, verses 12 to 33. Thanks okay. very much. No worries. So it starts, the way ahead with the way of life. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper, went forward, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous, grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. So we'll go to the next slide, and thanks for that, Esther. And uh, I'll have Charmaine read these two uh, passages. Thank you, Charmaine. Also, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, because, he said, for well, now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Thank you very much, Charmaine. And I'll read on with this next slide. Then he went up from there to Beersheba, 
And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the commander of his army. And Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? But they said, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. I'm going to ask Roger to read on. Thank you. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm since we have not touched you and since we have done nothing to you but good and have sent you away in peace you are now the blessed of the lord so he made them a feast and they ate and drank then they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another and isaac sent them away and they departed from him in peace it came to pass the same day that isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him we have found water so he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. Praise the Lord. And you can see a picture in the top of the screen of Beersheba to this day. Uh, so it's uh, really kicked on, you might say, looking at the buildings there, the Beersheba. So we're looking at the way ahead with the way of life. And what is this reading about wells and about Isaac and about Abimelech got to do with what we're doing? Well, let's pick up some of the themes that are shown in this particular passage. The first thing is that um, Isaac sowed in the land. This was after a famine, and he had been told by God not to go down to Egypt. So he stayed in the land in obedience to the Lord and sowed. Whenever a, a farmer sows, it shows that he is prepared to take a risk that his seed may not prosper. But in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. Now, I'm sure you all know the significance of the hundredfold. It means that uh, the multiplication of the Lord to the utmost and a sign of great blessing. And that you'll find also in the uh, Gospels, the reference to the hundredfold, that anyone who gives up mother, father, sister, brother, uh, his, his uh, house or land will receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. So the hundredfold is a very powerful indication of God's blessing. What it means literally when one sows seed that you get a hundred times back whatever you sowed, which is just enormous and huge. And uh, it tells us, of course, that we have the opportunity, if we keep sowing, to reap that hundredfold. And we've just seen a snippet of that expressed on those screens and i could not have dreamed back in 2017 when jordan and i were talking about setting up australia for jesus and getting things going to raise up soul winners across the country that we would see the the measure of activity and the participation we're seeing now we were just faithful to sow and the lord has blessed and thank god for the fact that the lord has blessed it is interesting that the word began to prosper as a new king james version expression but in the old king james it says the man went forward and we want to go forward from this particular point. We want to press on, uh, not giving up or letting the day of small things be the rule of what is before us or, the, or, or become self-satisfied. Uh, there are some people who, for one reason or other, haven't been able to continue, but it's always my prayer that some of them will come back into our, into our midst and reinforce the work that's being done uh, so that more and more people who don't know the gospel can hear the gospel. And then uh, the, the thing is that he, he began to go forward, but then the Bible also says he became very great, so much so that the Philistines envied him. And I don't know if you've noticed that, that the enemies of the gospel do envy the blessedness of God's people. They do envy them. And they'll seek to do something to stop the flow of God's blessing to you. And some of these enemies are actually even in the local church or even 
well, maybe sometimes come along to your local way of life campaign and they want to st somehow stop the flow of the well. Now, fill them up with earth. Uh, the earth here represents simply uh, man's ways and man's thinking compared to God's ways and God's, uh, God's provision, which is, of course, the life-giving water. When you look at the uh, Valley of Girah, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I think Esther got it right. Uh, he dug again the wells of water, but Girah was going to be a fight for him because the very name of the place stands for combat or dispute. And then, of course, true to form, the herdsmen of Girah quarreled and said, no, that's our water, even though that it was actually Isaac's well. So you can see how the enemy rises up to try and stop us. And, and that uh, stoppage doesn't always come from the world at large. The, the stoppage can simply be people saying, oh, you're not doing things the way we would do them, therefore you're invalid in what you're doing. And that sadly uh, can cut across the fruitfulness of, of the work that God has intended for us. Another thing is that um, another well he dug was called Esek or Esek, which meant contention. So you can see so far that Isaac, blessed as he was, was getting quarrels, disputes, and contention. So he dug another well to avoid the problem with the, the herdsmen of Gira and others, and found that uh, it only stimulated hatred. So some of us will, will know that even in our uh, close associations at church or elsewhere, some people just completely ignore what we're doing, mm. consider it a light thing, or aren't even bothered about it at all, not, not, not moved. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why that is the case. All I can say is that um, God seems to, uh, by his spirit, uh, anoint and appoint some people and other people just are sat satisfied with sitting back with uh, what I would have to describe as churchianity. But then he dug another well. So you've got to admit that, that Isaac was very persistent in his digging, or at least his servants were doing it, but I'm sure he put his hand in here. And then there was this time they didn't quarrel over it. It was called Rehoboth. Now, for now, the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. And certainly the Lord has made room for us in our work. And as we continue, continue just on this, uh, I'll just see if I can get the slide to, to change. There we go. Uh, he went up from there to Beersheba. And this is the climax of it all. And this is just so powerful. The Lord supernaturally manifested himself to Isaac at this time. Isn't that an amazing thing? The Lord had appeared to him earlier in the chapter, and now he appears to him again and reinforces his promise to him. Do not fear. I am the same God as, 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 as I was to your father Abraham. Do not fear. I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your seed or your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So isn't it so wonderful that the Lord himself makes an appearance and, and Isaac built an altar there, which was characteristic of those days of any appearance of God, uh, people tended to build an altar and offer sacrifice and call upon the name of the Lord. And he made his dwelling there. It's so, so important that wherever, whenever God manifests himself in our lives, that we pitch our tent there and worship and be close by him constantly. And, and then what happened? Uh, Abimelech, the former enemy, had to acknowledge that God had truly blessed him indeed, and, and God had even made his enemies uh, his, um, his friend. And um, uh, this is what it says, they departed in peace. And as soon as they departed in peace, what happens? The servants of uh, Isaac turn up and said, we found water. And that this was the ultimate, the, the ultimate find this was the ultimate, the climax of it all, that the, that the, the name Sheba means seventh. And I don't say that it's the seventh well, but seven, of course, is the number of perfection. And through his persistence and faith in God's guidance, Isaac found an ongoing stream of water that would serve him and, of course, has been with us to this day. So what can we learn from all of this? Well, there is a scripture there which... I might ask Lorraine to read for us in the yellow. Would you be able to do that for us, Lorraine, from Isaiah yes, 12? I certainly can. Yeah, thank you. Therefore, with joy shall we, you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, 
Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Isaiah 12, 3 to 4. Great. Thanks, Lorraine. And can anyone remember the song that goes along with this? Uh, I won't torment you by singing it myself, but I was singing it in the kitchen before Amari Louise was remarking just how readily uh, we remembered that song because we were taught scripture choruses at Mount Gravatt Assemblies of God in Brisbane when we first came to the Lord. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And I'll stop there, of course, because I'm sure that uh, others could do a better and more cheerful. Shall you say, praise the Lord. Oh. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Beautiful, Ian. Oh, Thank good you. Good to have Ian not there. with us, isn't it? Good we to have it. Ian not with us. <laughs> no, well done. Well done, Ian. And look, uh, look at the subsequent uh, or the consequent aspect of that, of that verse. Call upon his name, declare his acts among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're out there declaring the Lord's doings or his acts among the people, we're making mention that he is the God to be exalted. So the way Amen. forward for us is to dig more wells. Well, what wells do we have to dig? And uh, these are some of the wells. I wonder if um, I could get Roger to read that list of wells that we have there. More soul winners, more leaders, more campaigns, more gospel presentations, more response prayers, more people get, getting started in Christ, more disciples. Praise the Lord. And now Charmaine would pick me up on that list, wouldn't you, Charmaine? So I've actually amended it as follows. You like that, Charmaine? Yes, I like it. Uh, very good. So more prayer, and that's the very start of it all. And uh, I do. Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, very good. Okay, so more prayer is the beginning of it all and the action that flows from that. So shall we say that the the prayer is probably part of the digging in some respects. Now, mm. uh, of course, how do we get there? How does all that happen? So I'm just going to ask uh, Esther to read this uh, list here for us. Qu just quickly, thanks, Esther. Oh, there's a lovely picture of Esther and a a band of people in green over there in, in Bustleton. Oh, Jenny. Yeah, that Bustleton mm -hmm. session was um, during the Festival of Hope in Bustleton on that day. Um, yeah, so how do we get there? There's a few points there, and I've just posted as well as uh, as Tony's just mentioned about what wells do we have in the prayer, and it's in our chat there. So how do we get there? We would like more registrants on the website. We'd like more people contacted by the late leaders personally, and we would more want more people doing the webinars. So share that, bringing others to Jesus and let people know that's a way to get trained up. If there isn't one locally in your space, there's always an online resource available. There's also more people can be linked in with the Way of Life campaign. So sharing it, letting people know through your churches, through your friends network, through your family, those which may be keen, having those conversations, it certainly does link people in because you never know who else might be keen. But there is one big well that keeps the water flowing from the wells of salvation. And what could it be? It is our critical path. Is there well, a thought there from anyone? The critical path. And before I change the slide, I'm going to ask uh, 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 Sani, uh, Sani Simpson from Dalesford, uh, just to comment. You've been doing some of that lately, haven't you, Sani? Uh, doing some of what? Some of that Sorry? there, you've been contacting people. Oh, right. You've been referring yes. people to the webinar. Uh, yes. You yes. found that there were some who were real prospects. <laughs> yes, that's always good to find. And so, some that might have been suspects rather than prospects. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, when you find one that's keen, it's very encouraging. And especially one that's willing to drive two hours to come down to Dalesford and come out with us. So that's Jan. Mm. 
Uh, Jan exciting. Murphy, isn't it? Jan Murphy, is it? Jan Joseph, I think. Jan Joseph, that's right, that's right, yeah, it is. So, uh, well, look, I want to thank you for that because I sort of threw you, not in the deep end, but um, you, you got involved um, very kindly because we need more coordination in Victoria and your support like that is helping to bridge a bit of a gap, especially whilst I was away because I've been trying to cover that ground myself. Mm. So, well done and thank you. So the question has to be, what is our critical path? Well, let me reveal it to you because we, we haven't got a lot of time left on our meeting tonight. No, I think it is. A critical path is a description of what, what are the key things that make the big difference in uh, promoting and developing our network of soul winners, okay? And bear in mind, we're, we're wanting to support churches in their soul winning endeavors. We're wanting to make sure that people uh, around the country become proficient or effective, at least at sharing the gospel, even to the point where they can bring people to Christ. So how do we set that up? How do we make that happen? Well, there's simply seven steps. And those seven steps I'm going to ask Roger to read, uh, because they all occur within a very short period of time, one with another. Uh, so over to you, Roger. <clears throat> so just reading it. At a church or home group? Number one, bringing others to Jesus seminar, which we usually run on a Friday night for about two and a half hours. Number two, prayer at the church. And that's usually for about an hour on the following Saturday morning. Then having the cafe meetup near the church for around 45 minutes just to get the team ready for launching out onto the street. Number four, getting organized with clothing resources and fine tune our training. Number five is the way of life campaign itself. Um, when we go out on the streets with the, with the presentation. Number six, meet back at the cafe for a debrief at the end of the campaign. And the seventh step is planning the next campaign. When are we going to do this again? And who, who's the, who will the leader be? Excellent. Thanks, Roger. Now, that is what you call a critical path. That is that if we do those seven things consistently, we automatically generate more soul winners. So uh, David Bishop put me on to this gentleman that you can see in the top right-hand screen here. Uh, this gentleman here, who is Matt Pemberton, who's a chaplain uh, uh, in um, support of a ministry in the Blue Mountains area, the Penrith area. And he got all these people together, including a, a wonderful pastor friend. There's the pastor friend, Pastor Ian, I think, or Ian Graham. And all of these people, including Jenny Lord, who's with us tonight and who drove some impossible distance, I think, from Campbelltown to the Blue Mountains. And uh, you can see they're getting having a good look at all the materials that we had available for them that night. So that was a very good start to a, uh, a campaign that occurred the next day. And Larry and, and uh, Maria McCulley turned up for that as well, as did David Bishop. So these things uh, ignite and, and uh, inspire people and they have a tremendous impact. So if the more of these, uh, what we call critical path activities, the critical path activity is the bringing others to Jesus seminar and uh, the prayer and the way of life campaign. And uh, so the more of these that we have, the better and uh, uh, that, that's the thing that generates the primary results for us. Any comment on that, please, Roger? I think, I think you've hit it on the, the nail on the head there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it creates a, like such an excitement and a, when, when you get people together uh, fairly quickly after they've done the training on the Friday night, they're in prayer together. The next morning and then shortly after um you know you go to the cafe there's an energy as you, as the group comes together you pray again and out on the streets it's, it, it's a very effective way to put the training into practice which then can for like lead to the formation of a team so yeah I'd like to Lorraine to comment on it as well because this is our critical path the more we have these bringing others to Jesus live seminars at churches or with home groups or interested group group of people like we saw there in in Geraldton with uh, uh yes Celia any comment on that thanks Lorraine yes in January we had our state conf conference a retreat 
And we did discuss, we went through uh, the training again, and then I did ask our leaders in WA to look at doing their own training in their area. So to multiply the trainers. So, so far, Celia and Charmaine have done that. Uh, is there anyone else, Charmaine? I, I can't remember if anybody else has done that yet, but um, they've done their own training sessions. And as you could see from that photo of Celia with the group at Geraldton earlier, uh, she's got a real team going there now and they were really struggling. Um, so I'd encourage any, um, any team leaders who want to do the training, contact me and I can help you with it, uh, with, um, with PowerPoints, et cetera, to do the training yourself. And let's multiply this a hundredfold. Excellent. Uh, can you hear me all that? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I hope so. Um, so yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, so uh, we're going to comment on resources now. And uh, we have Andrew with us and Bronwyn. Uh, Andrew, over to you. You'll notice I'm wearing some of the gear. It, it gets quite cold here in Sydney this time of the year. That's where I'm wearing my, my beanie and my uh, jacket and my shirt and my um, Australia for Jesus scarf. Over to you, Andrew. Yeah, sure, Tony. Um, well, we've got this uh, Australia for Jesus scarf. Uh, it's good to, um, like when we're out in the on a campaign, um, we're, com we're communicating verbally with people, but also we're communicating visually. And so if we actually yes. have um, our attire, sometimes that's speaking to people while we're talking as well. It also gives a bit of uh, legitimacy. And, uh, you know, if you're wearing the gear, um, it's showing that you're actually confident um, with what you're on about. You're willing to wear the logo or wear the wear the material. And uh, Australia for Jesus or the way of life, um, uh, people will see others out there that are similarly attired possibly. And it just actually helps the movement um, when, when you're out to be um, more uh, pronounced, I think. But actually with, with Tony, um, as well as myself tonight, I mean, we're in the cooler part of the season as well. So we've got um, beanies um, or... Uh, scarves um and uh i've got one of the um you know the the jackets as as well um and that's shown on the uh, overhead there so um um you know it's uh just an effective way of um getting out there and being part of a team excellent andrew are the black t-shirts ready yet uh, they, i i could probably answer that question for yeah, they're just about to be printed yeah. They're just about to be printed. Uh, I had to work a bit more carefully on the question of the colour. And uh, so they're, they're actually not going to be black. They're going to be graphite like the Australia for T Jesus T-shirts that we produced, uh, uh, Lorraine. Um, oh, so they look darker on the picture. Yeah, they do. They do. It's probably just a, a trick of the of the computer. Uh, but they'll be, they'll be a deep sort of graphite colour and uh, just like yeah. the others. Not, not a perfect black. And uh, that might just suit some people, uh, for example, like the Perth CDD people, if they want to be a little less obvious when they go somewhere, or it just might suit people because that, it's a little bit more dressy. Uh, it just suits them. But we'll be continuing with both, of course. Any comment from you, Andrew, on that? Um, well, look, the main thing um, is just where do, where do you go for the, the um, uh, resources? And it's uh, afjshop.com. Um, and you can uh, go through and select both uh, clothing options or booklets uh, um, um, and uh, lodge, lodge, lodge your order through, through that. Um, and so uh, feel free to go to that website and uh, that's the spot. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for that, uh, uh, Andrew. And thanks for all the work you've been doing, particularly while I was away. And I do want to say thank you to... Lorraine and Charmaine, Ken Halliday, our bookkeeper and who does all the accounting for us, and Roger especially, uh, and of course, Andrew and Bronwyn for looking after things and, and continuing to do that to, to a, a different degree before I, I went away for that uh, period of time. So I'm very appreciative. Some of you may know that I had an operation uh, uh, to remove some skin cancers. And uh, I noticed just as I was looking on my text to um, to Esther, uh, where I was sending out a copy of the uh, 
thing. She had a list of prayers uh, and the the note at the end of that was also Tony facing possibility of skin cancer surgery. Please pray for a complete healing. And I'm very glad to say that there'd been no complications. I had some concerns, Charmaine, that I might end up with a smile like the Joker after having uh, a cancer removed from here. Uh, but um, I think you can see that I look reasonably normal. Uh, at least I hope I do. So thanks everyone for your prayers and your thoughts and your support during the time that I was away. We really did value it. Uh, online resources. Uh, we've thinned that down to say there's a lot of YouTubes uh, that are available that Martin Tui put together for us. And I'll be getting another practitioner to do that shortly so that we have a complete upgrade in the AFJ videos. But we're very grateful for Martin who did all our video uh, playlists for us. Uh, all the editing for the videos, along with uh, some help from Esther. And uh, so I've got to approach someone I've got in mind to, to actually do that upgrading for us. So that's a very handy link. And I might just ask Esther if she can put that on the, um, on the, uh, uh, the chat line for us, if, if she's able to do that. Um, thanks, AFJ. Esther. Yeah, no worries. I'll do that. Thank you kindly. And uh, now I'm sure you'll be wondering about what our um, goal is in terms of our fundraising. And uh, it, it's very exciting to see that our goal, we, we had a stretch goal this time. We normally have been only seeking a $75,000 goal. Our, our goal has been 90,000 and uh, we're almost at the 70,000 mark just with a few days to go. And uh, but it was a bit of a stretch goal for us. And so at the moment, we've only got to have uh, 20,000 to go. Now, if it had been a $75,000 um, uh, um, goal, we would be almost there, 5,000 to go. But because it's a, a little bit of a stretch for us, uh, we'll, we'll be seeking to um, run the campaign a little bit into July just to reach that uh, particular goal uh, because a number of projects we've had to support and actually be involved in. So thanks everyone. And you'll notice there in that yellow notice that there's uh, two types of um, giving. One of them is for the direct giving called Mobilize. I don't know if you can see on my screen where it says Mobilize, uh, but Esther will be able to put that on the chat line. And uh, we're, we're not uh, wanting to put any uh, overemphasis on giving. It's just giving as the Lord uh, puts it in your heart to do. It's just wonderful to see someone send in a, a reasonably reasonable size offering the other day, which is a great support to us. Uh, and someone who's not necessarily involved that much with us, but just wants to support the work we're doing. And that's a very legitimate way of contributing to the overall building of the wells of salvation that we've talked about. So thanks everyone for being involved in that. And our next meeting will be, of course, uh, on the Monday, the 10th of July. Uh, where we'll be doing our normal prayer for the lost uh, session. So that uh, brings to conclusion our, 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 our session for this evening. What time is it? 9.08. It usually takes us to about that long to finish up. So I want to thank everyone for being involved and thank Esther for her hosting and all those that contributed for tonight. I'm sorry if I didn't get to acknowledge you earlier. I noticed Miriam is there. Uh, thank you, Janelle Borg, for joining us. Uh, I've been informed about how things have been going there um, uh, with you, Janelle, from Mary. And, um, and Sandra we Weisman, or is it Wiseman? Wiseman, that's a, a, it sounds like a Dutch name to me, uh, Wiseman, is it? Very good, yeah. It probably isn't spelt, wi pronounced Wiseman, is it? <laughs> Uh, so, and look, it's great to see Jenny there. I'd like to have a conversation with Jenny at some stage because she sounds like dynamite with um, uh, the way that she's been moving around the country, the sign of a, a real evangelist. Uh, and uh, we'd be very excited to have a conversation with her and possibly uh, talk, maybe even on the radio. We might even be able to arrange something for you on the radio. Uh, uh, Jenny with um, with uh, Neil Johnson of Vision Radio to have a bit of a chat about your travels in due course. I think that'd be exciting. What do you reckon? Sounds good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, so you're up for it. That's terrific. Yes. So, and uh, I, I'm excited with AK. Uh, AK is so his group over in Chatswood have decided to do um, uh, regular meetings, and uh, and I think you've doubled your meetings in Chatswood, haven't you, AK? Is that right? AK is nodding. 
that's very good. And uh, and uh, Ian Knott, great to see Ian Knott. I trust you are well, and Melbourne's not too cold for you, brother, and I hope Heather as well, uh, and things are going well for you with the your plans, I think, to move. I don't know if that's still on the cards. What's the, the Blue Mountains, yes. We're still getting the house ready, but it's slow business, but because um, we need to sell it to be able to get out and move up to Blue Mountains, Sydney. Um, so... Yeah. So uh, I'd be interested to find out um, uh, if there's other people that you know that are from the Blue Mountains in AFJ. So uh, yes, there are. Like yeah, yes, there are. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you will. It'd be good, and anything we can do to help your uh, homecoming to New South Wales, where you belong, of course. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's where I came from originally. <laughs> that's right. That's what I mean. But of course. Yeah. Here with me talking, and I come from Victoria, so I'm, I've got a yeah. split there. That's right, well. So, look, uh, thanks everyone for being involved. Now, I'd like uh, I'd like to call upon uh, uh, Miriam, if she would, to 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 commit to commit our time to the Lord in prayer, particularly that goal of well digging, and maybe um, after Miriam has prayed for Judith to uh, Judith Graydon to offer a prayer for us as well. Is that all right if we finish up that way? Yeah, okay. Yes, thanks, Tony. Heavenly Father, I do thank you and praise you for this time and for the encouragement that it is to each and every one of us. Um, and these times of fellowship are spurring us on to love and good works. And we thank you, Father, for all the work that has been done and for, for the enthusiasm and the diligence that has been put into all the campaigns and the organisation of everything that's been going on. Lord, we just pray in particular that each, each leader would um, capture this vision of the, the well digging, Lord, of creating these wells of salvation in our own region, in our own little um, positive ground that you've given us, our little territory that you've designated us to. We just ask that you would um, strengthen our desire and our vision and our purpose and that we would be um, completely intentional and deliberate about in implementing some of these things into our own campaigns and broadening our horizons. Father, it is for your kingdom and your glory that we we wish to do this. Father, that your kingdom would come, kingdom would come, and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We'll call upon Judith to pray. And, uh, and that question that Rob answered about the green T-shirts, we'll do in the after chat for those that want to hold on for a few minutes afterwards. So over to you. Thanks, Judith. Uh, so we conclude it with your prayer. You'll just have to unmute, uh, Judith. Sorry. Very good. <laughs> Dear Father, I thank you for this time that we've had together. We have seen such good fruit from the work that's been going on in the last month or two. We praise you, Father, for the way that you are bringing more people into our team. And we pray that there'll be many, many more. We pray, Father, for... Um, uh, that you will help us to really um, uh, be able to relate to each other well and that we'll be able to uh, have these meetings on Friday nights and have other people come and be interested in learning about how to present the gospel. And we pray, Father, that uh, that would be a real uh, growing thing in, in the whole work of AFJ around Australia. We pray, Father, that um, you'll bless and guide us and strengthen us in the task ahead. Help us not to be discouraged, Father, when we don't see many results, but help us to keep pressing on, knowing that you, you will bring water like those wells. We keep digging, that water will come. So we pray, dear mm. Father, that uh, we will be people who will be active and really working hard to bring others to you. We thank you, Lord, that we're not alone. We have your Holy Spirit to help and to guide and to strengthen us. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. 
Well, thanks for that for everyone. I'll just hand over to Esther now as she concludes and we'll go on to the after chat, those who want to stay with us. Thank you everybody for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you all. Thanks everyone for joining us for tonight's session. It's great to have Tony back and having his teaching as well. We are going to stick around for the after chat. So if you do want to hang around, then we have an opportunity to encourage one another. And I want to focus particularly on answered prayers as uh, Tony did begun, uh, be, uh, started this session on. So if you would like to stick around, hopefully we'll be able to hear some stories. Um, but for now, I'll bid everyone a good night for those who want to leave, understanding it is a different time zones. It's 715 here in Western Australia where I am. I have seen some chats going on there as well. So uh, if anyone else wants to make mention about shirts there, then hopefully um, I don't know if I can see Andrew and Ronald. Yeah, if they're around there, they might be further comments on that one uh, as well. So thanks for those who are leaving us tonight. Um, good night all for those leaving. And I'm just going to stop the chat, the recording. Okay.